Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, today we have a very exciting topic here on Cups YouTube. At first, I'll be talking about consumerism and shopping. After that, Professor Kiva will be discussing how to save money. So as you can see, today's topic is about money. And I hope that we can all have a great chat today. I can see some of us entering the chat room now. Hello, everyone. Kathleen, hi. Good afternoon to you, too. I hope that everyone is doing very well. As you know, our midterms are over. Congratulations. I hope that everybody did well on their midterm exams. If you want to leave a little comment about how you're feeling today or even how your midterm exams went, how were your midterm exams? I hope they went fine. Let us know, send a little message in the chat. That would be great to hear. I hope that everyone is feeling refreshed after midterms and ready to start the second half of our spring semester. Therese and Jay Bong, hi. Great to see you today. Hello everyone, how are you? Litzt, hello. All right, so, um, for those who are just joining in, I'm Cassandra, and today I'm going to talk to you about consumer life and shopping. Um, Kiva will be talking about saving money, but I think that it is definitely more fun to spend money. So I'll be focusing on that first, and she'll take over a little bit later. Um, in our modern lives, I think it's really hard to avoid being a consumer. So shopping malls have taken more and more precedence or a bigger place in our economic life and our social life. Um, so spending money and consuming helps the economy, but are there some negatives to that? We're going to be discussing that today. We're going to be looking at both sides of consumerism and shopping. Let's see who's here. Oh, hi, Bob, welcome back, great. Um, so some questions to think about as we move forward today. Um, do you think that consumerism is good for the environment? Can we live a sustainable lifestyle while also participating in consumerism? So that's what we're discussing today. A little bit of a serious topic, but I hope that we can give you some useful words that you can use when you're talking about consumerism, spending money, and shopping. And as usual, we'll end our class with a quiz. So why don't we get started with our first question? I'm going to ask you to please type the definition of consumerism. What is consumerism in your own words? I'll put it in the chat. Here we go, everybody. There we go. What is consumerism? I would love to hear your thoughts. So we'll wait a moment for everyone to get ready. And I'm really curious who will be the first student to answer this question. What is consumerism? How do we define it? Or you can always pull <laughs> a definition off the internet. But I would love to hear it in your own words. It's great practice. What is consumerism? Joyce! <laughs> Lovely. Joyce says, consumerism is the idea of buying services and products in the market. I love the words you used. Service, product, market. Lovely answer. Thank you. Three says, I think it's basic concept of economics. Well done also. You're right, it's this basic foundation of economics. Very good. So anybody else? We'll give it a second before we move on. To use up, to consume. That's an awesome answer, Bob. You're right, because to consume really means that, to use up something, great. So um, maybe we can define it as the social as well as the um, economic order maybe that encourages using up or collecting or acquiring goods and services in an ever increasing amount. So the idea of consumerism, like um, Bob said, is using up, like constantly requiring, needing to buy these products and services. Very good. And that's the basic concept of our economy, as Therese said. 
Kathleen, it's giving more power to the consumer. Awesome answer. We're going to be talking about that later. Lovely, everybody. Okay, um, why don't we just jump in here uh, with our very first expression. Now, these are related to consumerism and shopping. So we'll start with the word shop, but it's in a different form and it's falling over. <laughs> Give it a moment here, everyone. Thank you. Can we see? I hope this is all right. Okay, so our very first expression today is simply to shop around. And I would like to see if you can use this in a sentence yourself. So to shop around simply means to be looking or you're wanting to find the best deal. The best deal, that could be the most suitable thing, price, service item for you. So when we're shopping around, it's like we're looking for the best thing or service that we can buy at the best price that we can. So it just means the process, excuse me, the process of shopping. I will put an example sentence here in the chat. So when you shop around, you're just looking for a good deal. We could say, for example, I shopped around before buying my car. I like to shop around before making a large purchase like this. So let me type it here in our chat. Oh, it's not really broken up, is it? There's a lot of text in there. So why don't we separate it a bit? I'll just type the example sentence and maybe you can provide one of your sample sentences too. I shopped around before buying my car. Could anyone else make an expression with to shop around? It's like saying just to look around. You don't buy something until you're absolutely ready to do so. Let's see if we can get this one in a sentence. Joyce, lovely. I don't like to shop around wasting my time. Perfect, exactly. Some people could think that shopping around is merely a waste of time. Bob says, I shopped around before choosing a college. Oh, yeah, sure, you can say that. Um, because, well, we consider spending your money, paying your tuition, so tuition is the school fee. Right, that's a purchase. So you can say that I shopped around uh, while I was choosing colleges. Very good. Very good. Yes. Excellent sentence. I shopped around choosing the college. Uh, I shopped around when buying a house, when purchasing a house or apartment. Therese says, can I use the phrase for online shopping too? Hmm. Yes, you can. <laughs> I had to think there for a moment, but yes, you certainly can. So you could say it about um, maybe um, I liked, oh, I would shop around the various... Uh, I'm not too familiar with online shopping. So coupon, G markets so those online shopping malls or services, you could say that. Yes, I shop around online all the time. I'm always searching neighbor for the best deal. You could say that. Kona says, many people shop around just for fun. Perfect sentence and welcome. It's great to see you. Anyone else to shop around? Any questions about it? Or are we okay? All right. We'll move on. Oh, hi, Io Alice. Yes, very good. Okay, so we'll move on to our next one. To take something back. So you could hear native speakers saying this expression. I took something back. I bought something and then I decided it wasn't right for me, so I took it back. That means they returned it, they brought it back to wherever they purchased it from and they got a refund. So I will give you some sample sentences here and then we can talk about it ourselves. So I just typed, it's when you return something, request a refund, and there's a small little tip about this one. We could also use it not related to money, but when we're talking about personal relationships. So I could speak something, but then I could decide, I take it back. I retract it. I want it to come back to me. So you could hear it in other forms as well. Um, also in romance, when two people break up, 
they decide they want to get back together. So maybe the man says to the woman or the woman says to the man, oh, please take me back. I want to enter this couple again. So take back, it has a lot of different meanings, but just when we're talking about money and shopping, it simply means to get a refund, to return something. So we could say the shirt didn't fit, so I took it back. You could say I took it back to the store also, but if you just say I took it back and end your sentence, Everybody can understand what your meaning is. So it's not wrong if you say more, but you could keep it short. We could say, okay, this person returned it to its origins, where it came from. Um, another one can be, I need to take back this car to the dealership for an oil change. So you're returning something to a place from where it came. You can use it in that context as well. So. Why don't we try this out? Let's try to keep it strictly talking about buying something. So can you use to take something back in a sentence? Or maybe you could even tell about a time when you took something back. That means you needed a refund. Personally, I don't like to take back items, uh, even if they're wrong for me, because <laughs> I'm a little bit shy. Um, I only take something back if... That means I only try to get a refund if it's a large amount of money. If it's something small, I usually just try to use it anyway, or I will give it to a friend instead. Kathleen says, it is difficult to take this product back once you open it. Good job. Perfect sentence. That's right. When you open something, you've broken the packaging, the ceiling. Maybe you can't return it as easily. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, and I noticed there's a question from Bob. I'm sorry, I didn't catch it earlier. To shop around plus nouns. So you're asking if we can use it like that. So I shopped around cars. I shopped around houses. You could say that. I would need to have more of an example sentence from you. So if you could type it, I'll let you know. So you could say it. Um, I'm just not sure how natural it sounds, we mostly use it with four. I shopped around four, then you put the noun in. So that's probably a little bit better. We need that connector. I shopped around for a college. I shopped around for a car. I shopped around for a new watch. Four, then your noun. Okay, we cleared that up. Let's go back to the chat. Kona says, question, if A sold something to B, is it always like B takes something back to A or can A take something back from B. Oh, that is such a good question. So um, I would say that the person doing the taking back would be B. So the person who gets it is the one responsible for taking it back. I can see why you think um, the seller is taking something back. So I, I guess like you can make an argument for both ways of using that expression, but it's more commonly used for the person who buys the thing to talk about taking it back for getting a refund. The person who sells it could talk about allowing the purchaser, allowing the person to take something back. So I allowed the person to take it back. Oh, I gave them a refund. So they're the person who controls it and you're the person who's kind of asking for it. So there's kind of a small difference. I hope that makes sense. Good question. Bob says, I need to take something back. I, I bought the wrong one. So you're talking about perhaps <laughs> buying the wrong convenience store ramen or spicy ramen. Good sentence. I enjoyed that. Yes, Therese, I agree. To take something back is quite annoying. Yes, it is quite annoying for me as well. Great. Everyone, you're doing such a good job. Okay, and I'll move on to the next one. It's one of my favorite expressions because I like to shop. And it is to simply try something on. To try something on, maybe you know this already, but in case you don't, it's like testing an item. So simply, you go to the store, you see um, a shirt or dress or something you'd like to buy, an item of clothing, and then you just put it on in the change room. You're trying it on to see if it fits you well or not. So it's good to try on clothes, perhaps, before purchasing them. I would like to see if you can use this in a sentence. I'll give some definitions. 
again into the chat room that we can read. So to try something on, it's when you put on an item of clothing to see what it looks like on you. Um, an example could be, I tried on the new shoes. Great, and they fit well. Or I decided not to buy something after trying it on. So we have this sentence too. I decided not to buy the jacket after trying it on. After trying it on, it looked terrible on me. So how about you? Could you tell me about trying something on, trying on a new pair of shoes, trying on a wedding dress and it not fitting properly? Something like that would be really um, a natural use of this expression. So try it on. Try it on could also maybe be used in certain cases like as in give it a shot, try something, uh, give it a chance. Maybe that could be applied in a broader context, not related to clothes, but we'll just stick with this expression. So trying on some clothes, trying on a pair of glasses. Let's see what sentences we can make together. So anyone, let's see who can be the first student to answer. To try something on. Have you ever tried something and it fit really well? Have you ever tried on something, I should have said. <laughs> tried on something, we put on the clothes. Have you ever tried on something and had it fit really well? Do you hate trying on clothes? Actually, I don't really like trying on clothes when I'm feeling tired or feeling hungry. I feel like it's a waste of my time. But after I've eaten <laughs> and I'm in a really good shopping mood, I'm in, I just want to shop and, and buy new things, then I really love trying on clothes. So maybe for me, it depends on how I'm feeling. Oh, here we go, Kona. It's more important to try shoes on before buying them than clothes. I agree with you, good sentence. Bob says, once I was trying pants on, Okay, once when I was trying pants on, the staff opened the door to hand me more pairs of pants. <laughs> oh, that could have been a little startling. Like, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Good job. Therese says, there is a long line in front of a fitting room with so many people who want to try clothing on. Or you could say articles of clothing on. Very good. I loved that sentence. So with clothing, um, you could put an S on it, but I think that nowadays we don't do that anymore. So it's better if you just say clothing. Um, we treat it usually as non-count, but we count the articles of clothing or the items of clothing. So keep that in mind, but your sentence is really good. I'm just being a picky English teacher. Good job. Okay, anybody else before we move on? Okay, and the final one, this is quite related to trying something on. It's an expression we use when you try something on and it fits so well. So fit is just, you know, how it feels, how you wear it, how it looks. So we say it fit like a glove. It fit like a glove. That's a positive idiom, meaning something fit well. So if you think of a glove, maybe winter gloves or even like a baseball glove. It's something that's really um, perfectly shaped for your hand. So it's like saying the thing fit perfectly. It's just like a glove on your hand. It's so perfect. It feels great. It looks great. It's like snug. Snug means it's really like um, a close fit. So this is again, a positive thing. If something doesn't fit like a glove, it's not good for you. It's maybe too big. It's maybe awkward looking, etc. So anyway, um, to fit like a glove, simply, it fits well, it's great. So what a great suit. I could tell my father, wow, what a great suit. It fits like a glove, dad. It looks great. Or I could say about my friend, she bought a new skirt. Her new skirt fitted her like a glove. So we can say that, it's a lot of fun. Why don't we try to get your sentences going in the chat room? To fit like a glove. Oh, Kona made a joke, but rubber gloves do not fit very well. <laughs> You're right, so we need to exclude <laughs> rubber gloves. Or in Korea, are they called mommy sun? like the, the big pink gloves that you can use when you're washing your dishes or doing other household chores. <laughs> Those are usually too big for my hands. I have really tiny hands. <laughs> right, so 
maybe think of the glove as like an elegant glove, a very nice pair of gloves. Oh, Kathleen has a great one here. Um, I, it's better to try on a dress before having meals. <laughs> That's from our last sentence. Excellent, excellent. I'm just reading it now. And Therese, you're welcome. Uh, Kona says, yes, the rubber gloves. Good joke. Bob says, NBA hats fit me like a glove because uh, they have so many different size choices. Very cool. Good sentence. Yeah, this NBA hat fits Bob like a glove. Um, because there's so much variety, you can choose the best hat for him. And I'm really curious, Bob, if you're a big NBA fan, please let us know your, your team. Who do you support? <laughs> it's hard for me to find pants that fit like a glove. Perfect sentence, Kona. You can say it. Yeah. Uh, I have the same problem too, <laughs> but I won't get into it here. It's hard for me to find pants that fit like a glove. You could even say pants that fit me like a glove. Both sentences are correct. So you can have a little bit of um, creativity or you can, you know, modify the sentence a bit. Perfect. Both are perfect. Good job. So maybe you can tell me about a time when you bought something and then it just fit like a glove. It fit so perfectly. For me, those moments are rare. Um, <laughs> sometimes, actually, I need to use a tailor, tailoring services. And now I forget the Korean word for tailor. Um, but tailor is essentially the person you go to who, who would cut your clothes, basically, and sew it again to make it the right fit for you. So if the pants are too long, because my body is too short, <laughs> uh, the tailor would actually tailor is a noun and a verb so you could have a sentence where the tailor tailors your pants so the tailor the person adjusts or cuts your pants so that's getting off topic but that's another expression for everybody kona i think you're right i think so <laughs> um everything on sale three says doesn't fit like a glove for me oh don't feel bad i think that um those clothes are on sale because they don't really fit people that well anyway. <laughs> Great job, everyone. Okay, Bob's got another coming in. Oh, he's answering my question about the NBA. I don't support uh, any team, just like to wear their clothing line. Oh, very cool. I relate, actually. Um, same here, like uh, like the like Major League Baseball or NBA. I love the style, but I don't really know much about the sport, so... Um, yeah, I can respect that. Uh, however, hockey, if any, <laughs> now we're really getting off topic here, but as a Canadian, I love hockey. If anyone ever wants to discuss hockey, <laughs> please message me or leave a comment. That would make my day, meaning that would make me so happy. Okay, we'll move away from these for just a minute. Um, now, I just want to have a little chat with you. We're about halfway through. So my question for everybody is, could you please tell me about a recent purchase? Recent purchase. Recent means lately, nowadays. Something that happened to you maybe last week or last month even. So not ancient, but a little while ago. Purchase would be something that you buy. So, for example, my phone was a purchase from, well, two years ago. It's time to replace this phone. Um, purchase is something you buy. So please go ahead, share a re excuse me, recent purchase that you are proud of. So something that you bought that you really like and you'd like to tell us about it. What did you buy? Where did you buy it? Um, maybe somebody recently bought a new phone. They upgraded their phone. They'd like to tell us about it. Um, who knows? Maybe you've recently purchased a car. You've bought a car, a new apartment. I'm talking big here, but it could also be something like a delicious cup of coffee. Why not? Um, an article of clothing that you really loved that fitted you well, that fitted you like a glove. Um, I don't know. What else could we purchase? Toys for your children? Maybe you made your children very happy by buying them the latest game, buying them a Nintendo Switch so they could play Animal Crossing. Um, or something that you purchased online. Maybe some service that you subscribe to. Let's see. I wish I had a great example for you. Um, I'll try to think. What was my most recent purchase that I'm proud of, that I'm happy with? Hmm. <laughs> 
honestly, I mostly spend my money on food. So I am a person who enjoys eating out at delicious restaurants. Um, in terms of items, I'd have to think. Most of my recent purchases were earlier, not recent really, they were earlier in the year. I don't know if they count as recent. Okay, I have a message coming here from Kona. Food, <laughs> I relate to you. I bought a good Bude Jige meal kit. I'm about to eat it now. Oh, wow. <laughs> so actually, I'm a huge fan of Bude Jige. Um, I really hope we have a food lecture coming up because I would love to talk about Bude Jige. Um, I don't cook it myself, although I watch a lot of YouTubers, like Recipe YouTube. Um, I've always wanted to make it myself, but I'm a little scared of it not turning out well. But yes, uh, I travel far sometimes for bude jjigae. I have some favorite restaurants in different parts of Korea. And once I traveled two hours to go to my favorite bude jjigae restaurant in a town, uh, Gongju, near Daejeon, they have a really fantastic bude jjigae restaurant there. I am such a fan of that soup. Okay, moving on. Kona, yes, all I purchase these days is food. Bob says, I bought an HP touchscreen. There we go. This is like the classical definition of a purchase. Awesome. Touchscreen laptop. Now I can take notes digitally. Very good. I love that. Congratulations, Bob, and enjoy. Rose, hello, Rose. Welcome back. Kathleen, I got a new oven for baking more cookies during the pandemic. Oh, Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I am so happy for you because um, I love baking. I don't really do much of it in Korea, but when I lived in Canada, of course I had an oven. Um, so I did a lot of baking and I miss baking. So when I hear people talking about baking, I'm just filled with joy. Wow, so I hope you enjoy making your cookies. That's so great. <laughs> I really hope we have a food discussion coming up, everybody. Anyone else? with a recent purchase. Haksan, hi, welcome, welcome. Okay, anyone else? Last chance before we move on. A recent purchase, something that you bought recently that you enjoy. I think I'll answer because I stopped answering earlier. The Maybe the most recent purchase that I can kind of think of would be paying for spa services. So. A little while ago, I bought some package <laughs> to a spa that would give me facial treatments every so often. So maybe that would have been my latest purchase that I'm proud of, something that I'm looking forward to. Oh, good. Therese, since the pandemic started, I've been purchasing groceries. Very good. Yes, I've been purchasing groceries, too. Um, it's something very necessary and it's a good idea to have a little more food in your home just in case but um i understand that korea doesn't really have a problem with hoarding i'm going to type that word everybody because maybe it's new hoarding is when you buy too much in the sense of you are getting all of the item and other people can't buy that item. And hoarding has a negative connotation. That's consumerism gone wild. That's too much consumerism. That's the bad side. So hoarding is when you buy too much. And Korea, I think, doesn't have this problem. But in my country, Canada, when the coronavirus began, people started hoarding yeah, Therese, there we go. That's a really better way of describing it. Panic buying, exactly. Hoarding is like panic buying. Um, hoarding could also just be hoarding like for no reason, not because you're panicked. Some people hoard just because that's a part of their personality. But um, I think most people like in countries abroad are panic buying. You're right. So yeah, uh, panic buying causes hoarding. We can look at it like that. So hoarding, again, is when you have so much stuff, you're just holding on to it. Uh, like in Canada, they were hoarding toilet paper and groceries. And I think my parents even said meat. They, My parents had a hard time for about two weeks finding meat in the grocery store. So that was an issue for sure. Um, okay, not to talk about COVID anymore. Oh, we have one more. Our former generation has a tendency for hoarding because they've gone through the war. Yes, perfect sentence, Kona. And mm -hmm, 
Um, I think that some generations in in my country, uh, especially grandparents who survived the Great Depression, like. 1910s that's going a long way back in history but um sure those those individuals who grew up perhaps were born during the great depression depression era uh they also had a tendency to hoard items because they you know they experienced so much lack that it was the way that they were uh brought up you know to keep things just in case of an emergency so um i can understand why Older generations in Korea and many countries would hoard items, right? Very good. Okay, we're going to move on to an expression. And I'm not sure if anyone really knows it. So I'm excited to teach this new one. Let's go back to our board here. So if I hope you can see it. This one is rain check. Now, I really wonder who can use this one in a sentence. It's a little bit hard to explain, but a rain check is basically an offer or a request to get or to do something later than was planned. So you could get a rain check or have a rain check for something like a sale that you missed, an event that was canceled or a concert. There was rain, the concert was canceled. So uh, the venue or the concert organizers had to offer something we call rain check. They had to give a rain check to all of the ticket holders so that they could watch this concert later. Um, we could even extend it to social situations like having a meeting with friends. So it's a really broad term. I'll give you a shopping example first. Oh, Bob knows it. <laughs> Bob says, can I take a rain check for this lesson? Meaning Bob maybe wants to watch this lesson or have this lesson a little bit later. I could say sure, but I wonder what your reason is, Bob. Do you need to go? I hope not. <laughs> okay, so a sentence for rain check could be the item was out of stock. So the cookies were out of stock. So the cashier, the seller gave me a rain check, meaning I could bring back this check and I can purchase the cookies later for the price that I expected to pay. So um, we actually, in my country, used to have a, a physical piece of paper. It was a check and it was just literally called the rain check. And um, people would write down what you were allowed to buy for how much money and you would take it home. And when the item came back to the store, you can use your rain check to buy that item at the original price or at the sale price or at the price you wanted. So it's literally a piece of paper, but as time went by, people kind of use this expression broadly. So maybe it's not a piece of paper anymore. Maybe it's an email. Maybe it's a word of mouth agreement. So it's extended since then. Okay, Kona says, BTS did not give a rain check for this year's concert. My daughter is so disappointed. Oh no. I really hope that isn't the truth. I hope you're just writing a sample sentence. But if that is true, that's quite disappointing. I'm so sorry. Um, they have to find a way to fix that. I hope you at least got your money back or her. she got her money back. Um, Therese says, yes, it is kind of a check, right? It was, could be a check, or nowadays it could be just any other type of agreement. So what I mean by that is, Native speakers will often say, like what Bob said, um, I need to take a rain check on something with you. This isn't about buying. This is about a social situation, like a dinner. I gave the sentence here. I'm sorry, let me take a rain check on dinner with you tonight. If somebody says, let me take a rain check on you, it means they're not going to get a piece of paper from you, but they're saying, I'm busy now. How about later we meet and let's have our dinner later? So it's like a polite way of rejecting someone's offer. So it's used in a variety of ways. I hope that didn't confuse anybody. If you have a question or if you want to try to use this in a sentence, please go ahead. So maybe you could talk about getting a rain check for an item or on a social agreement or meeting that couldn't happen. So I could say everybody um, right now, our Saturday on site, on campus classes are canceled. We need to take a rain check. But in the future, 
our campus will open again and we can all have these lessons face to face. Okay, Lee says, farts are subject to delay because of the, oh, sorry, flights. I'm, I need my glasses. <laughs> flights are subject to delay because of the fog. Sure, we can say that maybe uh, the flight is like a rain check situation, but I think rain check sounds a little informal. And when you're talking about flying, like airline travel, something like that, they use specific airline so um, like airplane words, basically. So it would be like, oh, the flight was delayed, like that. Um, yeah, like a delay, right, right. Good job, Lee. So rain check, um, it is a delay, but um, it would sound a little bit informal, like it just doesn't match if we say um, the item was delayed until later because um, delay has a different meaning in terms of like arriving, transport. So it's a similar thing, but it's not it's not going to have the same meaning. So rain check is a specific thing that means uh, I will get or do something at a later time. And it's a promise. Therese says it sounds like a debt. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> it could be considered that way. All right. We're going to move on, but if you have a question, please let me know. That one's a little bit tricky. Think of it as items, okay? Simple. Um, the shirt that I wanted was on sale, but it was out of stock. So the store manager gave me a rain check, meaning I could buy it later for the price that was advertised. Okay. Another one. It could be new. It is an idiom. It's an expression called keep up with the Joneses. Now, who are the Joneses? They're anybody. So it's, this is a family name. So it's like in Korea, it's like keeping up with the Kims or the Lees. Um, the Joneses, it's just this old expression we've been using in Canada and America and perhaps other Western countries too, uh, just to represent like a rich family or like your neighbors. Um, I'm not sure if anyone is familiar with a variety show in America called Keeping Up with the Kardashians. That's where this expression kind of leads us to. The Kardashians are very rich. People want to keep up with them. Keep up means to socially be like them. So, for example, the Joneses, they're an imaginary family, but we think that they're kind of rich. So my neighbors are the Joneses. My neighbors, the Joneses, they bought a new car. I want to keep up with the Joneses. I also want a new car. I don't want their brand new car outside getting all this attention and my old car is there too parked in the driveway looking kind of bad. So it's about keeping up your social appearance. So it's like when you're comparing yourself with others. This is an expression that means, yeah, um, this person cares about how they are received or seen by others. Maybe we can relate to this. If anyone could try this out in a sentence, that would be great. So I gave the definition in the chat. Uh, refers to comparison to one's neighbor as a benchmark or a guide or a ranking of your own social status. So her mother always tries to keep up with the Joneses. If you hear somebody say that, it means this person's mom wants to be like their neighbors. So if their neighbors uh, renovates their house or buys a new expensive piece of furniture, this person wants to do it too. So they're always going to have the same social status. Or maybe in a Korean example, um, your friend enrolls their child in a very expensive hagwon, prestige hagwon. You feel maybe that you should enroll your child in the same hagwon to be keeping up with the Joneses. That means to be like keeping up with your friends and their lives. Um, another example sentence here. He just bought an expensive sports car. I think he's just trying to keep up with the Joneses. So. Let's try this one. I'm wondering if anyone can give a sample sentence. So are you concerned with keeping up the Jones with the Joneses? You could say, I don't care about keeping up with the Joneses. Or I have a friend who really cares about keeping up with the Joneses. So this whole sentence 
it's a lot, but it just means like, yeah, maintaining the same lifestyle as others or, you know, comparing yourself with others. So a little complicated, but let's see if we can use it in a sentence. Okay, maybe not. Oh, <laughs> it's a little hard, isn't it? Oh, here we go. Bob, as soon as I got a new girlfriend, my friend got one too. <laughs> He's trying to keep up with the Joneses. That's a really cute expression and you understand it perfectly. Well done. Yes, a lot of teenagers want to keep up with the celebrities. So you can change the word. Excellent, Kona. You don't need to say the Joneses because, I mean, if you say that in... In Canada, people understand your meaning, but maybe here, you don't really need to say the Joneses. You can literally say the benchmark for comparison. So you could say keeping up with, yeah, keeping up with your friend, keeping up with celebrities, keeping up with their classmates, etc. Good job. Kona, I think I was more concerned about, concerned about keeping up with the Joneses when I was a teenager. Very good. That's right. So you were comparing yourself to others. Very good. Okay, we're going to move on to another one. This one's a bit easier. Window shopping. This one is pretty simple. It just means when you're looking, but you're not buying. So people go window shopping when they're just in the store, another word is browsing. They're browsing, they're window shopping, they're in the store, but they do not plan to spend any money. They do not want to buy, they just want to look. So, we could say, I went window shopping downtown, meaning I just looked, kind of like looking through the windows, <laughs> but you can definitely enter the store. Look through the windows. Mm, I'm not buying anything. I'm just looking today. Ah, in Korea, they say eye shopping. Yes, Bob. Yes. <laughs> that is Konglish. Yes. Eye shopping is Konglish. In Western countries, someone asks you like, hello, do you need help today? What are you doing in our store? You could just say, oh, I'm just browsing. I'm just window shopping. But if you say I'm just eye shopping, it might be a little strange. So eye shopping is the Korean expression, but we wouldn't use that in a Western country. Very good, very good. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, as you know, some store owners dislike window shoppers. They don't like when you go in and just look around and not plan to buy anything. Um, I'll give a example from my own life. I like to go window shopping at the Samsung store. <laughs> so there's a Samsung electronics store down the street from my house. And I go there and I just look around. I'm, I'm just window shopping. Um, so I do that just to look at some stuff that I would like. And then maybe I make a plan to buy those items online or at a different place. That's my, my secret. Anybody else? Do you enjoy window shopping? Do you go window shopping for fun? Um, do you hate window shopping? Yes, Radha, exactly, marketing research. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Window shopping is a form of marketing research. Good job. Anybody else? Maybe if you're bored, you go window shopping. You just walk around the mall and look at stuff, but you don't buy anything. Maybe with the coronavirus, it's not really a good idea to go window shopping. We should be staying, you know, in our homes unless absolutely necessary. Kona, great question. Can we do window shopping online? Hmm. So I would have to say no, um, just because the idea of window shopping is that you're physically present. So your body is in the store walking around. That's where the expression comes from. So now with the advent of online shopping, I think it just doesn't naturally fit if we say I was window shopping online. Maybe native speakers do it, I don't know, but I don't do it. Um, in that case, I use browsing, browsing. I was just browsing the online shops, browsing. Browsing, you can use online as well as offline, and window shopping is offline. Good question. I go window shopping for two to three hours when I am on a diet, Kathleen says. Great, so it's an excuse to kind of just walk around, keep yourself busy and moving to exercise. Excellent. 
Screen shopping. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I think we need to start saying screen shopping. <laughs> browsing. Yeah, browsing. Um, and browsing could even just mean like not only browsing to buy, to to shop. Browsing could just mean like surfing the internet. Surfing the internet. I'm giving so many expressions today, everyone. Sorry. It just means like using the internet with no exact goal. Like you're just kind of clicking different links, going from website to website. So browsing, kind of exploring like that. So you could say I was browsing the websites. Uh, I don't know. I was browsing certain websites all day. Or I was browsing Google all day. I was browsing the something ads or the something forum. So yeah, browsing just means like using, exploring, searching around. Very good. Okay, and our last expression. Now this is a negative one. This is a noun and a verb, but we're gonna talk about the noun first. So a rip off. You might hear people, especially in American like Hollywood movies, talking about a rip off. That's something that simply means something was a bad deal. Something that was not worth what you paid for it. So I would say that maybe the $10 cup of coffee from the coffee shop was a huge rip off. It was so expensive and the quality was not worth what I paid for it. So that's an example of something being a rip off. Another sample sentence. We could say here, oh my, you spent $200 on that tie, on that necktie? Oh, what a rip off. So I'm saying that that thing, that item, the tie is not worth the money paid for. It's a bad deal. It's a bad purchase. Um, another, I like to use coffee. The price of a coffee at the art gallery is a huge rip off. Just for example, I think um, I thought that when I was in France, looking at <laughs> different art galleries and getting thirsty and buying a cup of coffee, but kind of thinking, oh, these are so overpriced. It's such a ripoff. This is just regular coffee, but it's because it's in the art gallery. Why I need to pay extra. Alice says, I just. Oh, right. Going back to the sentence before. She does window shopping before buying something. I just survey window shopping before I buy something. Very good. Thank you for that sentence. So our final one today is rip off. It is a bad deal. Something not worth the money you spent. Please write your experience or just a sentence that you can think of using rip off. Now I'll tell you that rip off, it can also be a verb. So it's an action. I was ripped off by the car dealership. I was ripped off by somebody. So this is, it sounds like a little bit of a slang and it sort of is. We wouldn't use this word in an academic or formal situation. But again, it means that the bad thing happened to me. I was ripped off. It means I paid too much for something. It wasn't worth it. So rip off and to rip off are both used. We have the noun and the verb. So let's see what you have to say. Something that was a ripoff or anything that you can think of, or if you have a question even. And as I mentioned, it's a little bit of a slang. It's not rude, but I just wouldn't, wouldn't say it in a very formal situation. But in conversation between native speakers, it's totally fine. Therese says, can I use it in the same way as overpriced? Yes, exactly. Overpriced and synonym. I'm oh, sorry. And <laughs> I need a cup of coffee. Rip off and overpriced are synonyms. So they're the same to each other. Um, I think that overpriced is more formal, more academic. Rip off could also mean like a little bit of a trick or something, you know, uh, maybe you were scammed. So it kind of has that feeling. That could be the difference between the two words, but essentially they have the same meaning. Oh no! <laughs> we have a student saying, I love ripping someone off. <laughs> Maybe you, you have a business and <laughs> you like selling things and making a huge profit. Maybe when a huge profit isn't deserved. 
<laughs> anyway, that's really, that's a funny sentence. Tourists are easily ripped off. Yes, tourists are easy to get ripped off. Perfect sentence, Kathleen. Tourists are easily ripped off. You are right. Um, especially when someone comes up to you in Europe and they're, they're selling something, like something homemade, like a bracelet or anything, and you, you just look at it. You maybe you pick it up and they say, oh, you know, you know, you need to buy it or you buy one and then they try to make you buy more or even the thing you buy is not even that's, you know, not really worth it. There are so many different ways. Now I'm kind of getting into scams, tourist scams, but I think maybe that'll come up later when we talk about traveling. Um, oh, good, Kona, you're right. It's similar to buying a lemon. So for those who don't know, buying a lemon is like buying something that doesn't work or it's just not worth it. We usually use lemon with cars. Like I bought a junky old car. It was such a lemon, meaning like it just wasn't wasn't worth it. It didn't work. It didn't, it didn't do what it was supposed to do. Essentially, it was broken, but I paid a lot of money for it. That's a ripoff. That's a bad deal. Very good. Yeah, perfect. Okay, we understand everyone. Great. I think that's the nature of business. <laughs> right. Okay. That's going to lead into our discussion on consumerism. So we've got a few minutes left. Um, now we'll get a bit more serious. Our first discussion question is here. So we were talking today about shopping, a little bit of consumerism. I want to ask you your opinion. What are some shopping habits among consumers in Korea and have you noticed any changes in these habits so for instance um, if you want to answer that question what are some shopping habits among consumers or you could say customers or people in Korea you could say uh, they're buying masks more than usual nowadays um, maybe mm, a change has been that people are spending less on social activities due to the coronavirus. Maybe people are not going out and spending money in restaurants as often as they used to. Maybe there's an increase, more online shopping. Uh, maybe people are cooking in their home or baking, uh, spending money on groceries more than eating out, more than going out. So anything like that. What do you have to say? How do you think that these shopping habits have changed in the last little while? What are some shopping habits you think exist? What are your personal shopping or consumer habits? I would love to hear what you have to say. Maybe people are spending more money now on electronics, um, on educational goods and materials because people are at, their, are at home trying to study and remain entertained. That's something to think about. <laughs> Anybody? Are you spending more money because of the coronavirus or less? We have a student. I'm going to try to say your name. I'm really sorry if I butcher it. Uh, e? Can I call you Lee, maybe? <laughs> um, nowadays, Lee says consumers just use smartphones to pay. Awesome. You're right. Um, I have something now called Samsung Pay on my smartphone, and it's so convenient, and it, it's like magic, and it amazes my relatives and friends in Canada, because in Canada, our country is not that technologically advanced in, in that sense yet. Um, it's a big country, so we don't really have, like, enough power, really, or enough, like, capability to have... Wi-Fi everywhere and you know strong and fast internet connection so we don't have this like mobile advancement going on so we do not really pay with our, our smartphones in Canada yet but in Korea we can and I think it's so awesome. Kona says uh, more people shop around at offline shops and after quick browsing on the phone they buy the items they like online. Yes, yes, we talked a little bit about that before. Um, I certainly do that. I go to the Samsung store, I look at stuff, and then I go home later to research and find it online at a different price. Yes, about the smart banking, right? It's great, says Lee. I don't have to carry my wallet anymore. I know, 
it's amazing. It's a really amazing time to be alive. Oh, okay. Well, we are running out of time. So why don't we just skip ahead if no one has any other questions or comments to our quiz. So thank you to everyone who's been listening thus far. Our quiz today has three questions. Our first question, hmm, maybe I'll close this <laughs> and this as well. All right, so our first question, get ready everyone, is if we say that something fits well, we say that it fits like a, like a what? Fill in the blank. Oh, and Kathleen, you, you are very fast at typing. I didn't even finish speaking. Excellent, Kathleen. Very good. It's like a glove. Awesome. Okay, next we have this one. What's in a shop without intending to buy anything? Looking but not buying, and we use two words. We're looking, but we won't buy it. What do we call that? Who can be the first student to use that? Window shopping, oh, Kathleen, two out of two. <laughs> you are a very fast typer. Awesome, and everyone else is correct as well. Lovely job, very good. Okay, and finally, our last one. Who can be the first student to use rip off in a sentence? So it can be the noun or it can be the verb. Who can use rip off in a sentence? Just make any sentence. We'll see who's the first one. And if it's a perfect sentence, I will be very pleased. Who can use rip off in a sentence? Don't rip me off anymore, Lee. Very good, very good. And Bob, you're asking a question. You're correct, you can say that. It's a rip off price. Yes, that's a fine sentence. Good job, everyone. So today, I haven't really decided what our prize is going to be. So we're gonna sort that out later for right now. High five. <laughs> you get a high five. Uh, I've written down who the winners are from this class. And we will be getting in touch about what the results can be later of this prize. So good job, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. And it's really great to see all of you again. Welcome back. And um, I'm happy to see some new names in the chat room today. It was great speaking with you. As you know, uh, Professor Kiva, oh, high fives back to Kathleen, awesome. <laughs> uh, uh, Professor Kiva, will be now talking about saving money. So on the same channel, in like two minutes, uh, Professor Kiva will be discussing how to save money. So today we talked about spending it, now we'll talk about saving it. I had a really great time discussing with everyone today. Everyone, your English is awesome. I'm really pleased with the sentences that I saw today. So keep up the great work and I encourage you to stay for Kiva's lesson. You have about a minute if you wanna go and grab a drink of water or something. And I hope to see you in the chat room at Kiva's lesson. Thank you everybody. Have a great day, take care, bye bye.